Hi everyone. Thanks for joining the session. I hope you all are doing well. And my voice is audible to everyone. Can you guys put yes in a chat if you're watching on the YouTube? Just put yes if you guys are able to hear me. So we can start. The session is going to be very interesting because we are going to do very detailed discussion about the G scaler, right? So we'll try to touch every component. I'll try to like demonstrate about the lab parts, how it is going to be accessed and what are the features we have. We'll try to explore the GIA, GPA, which try to understand the GCC client connector portal, right? We'll try to understand the GTNA concept. We'll try to understand the SASE concept. We'll try to understand the JDX con concept. We'll try to understand as a firewall as a service, right? Thanks, like for guys, you know, just, you know, <clears throat> heads up, you guys are able to hear me. So let's just start, right? Let me save my screen. All right. So today we are going to just do the deep dive about that, the power of Gscaler products, right? So a comprehensive understanding we are going to do about the Gscaler product that's, you know, basically we known as the cloud security. Right. And I know like we having a lot of people uh, across the market and uh, right, they are just trying to understand this product and many are very confused about it. Right. So I'll try to make it very simple. I'll try to make you to just understand about this product because it's become a niche of the market. Right. And it's having a lot of demand. Right. And trust me, once you understand, right. And once you complete this SASE solution and you are going to apply somewhere for the jobs, you are going to be, you know, rock the star in the market because everyone wants a SASE engineer nowadays in market. Okay. So that's why it's very important. We have to understand this framework and uh, that is a SASE framework. And uh, after doing the discussion of the SASE framework, we just have to understand why this G scaler becomes so popular uh, nowadays market and every customer, every organization are focusing to do the digital transformation of their business in a SASE framework, right? And they are just giving them more value for the G scaler to just achieve their digital transformation to get this, you know, all like the features, like the whatever they are talking, the zero trust network access, they are talking about the secure web gateway, SASE framework. So by leveraging these G-Scaler features and product, they are going to achieve their journey. So that's why we have to understand. <clears throat> okay. So who we are? So we are the Gwinnett Technology. And uh, here we are delivering a lot of uh, training. So if you guys have any requirement for the Cisco, Versa, G-Scaler, Palo Alto, WebTaylor, and a lot of cloud checkpoint, Fortigate, right? So anytime you can contact us and definitely you will get uh, some good content, right? And it is going to helpful to, you know, upgrade your career and your future journey, right? So we believe like to just upgrade the engineers. So our professionals, so they can contribute for the digital transformation. They contribute for the, our India economies. So they can grow in anywhere. So that's, we're just trying to add some bit and pieces to just help the candidate with the whatever our instructors having that knowledge about the product which is available in the market. And we are just targeting the niche products like the key technologies which are just, you know, trending in the market, right? So that's why we are here to help, right? So you can always reach out to us for any kind of the support. <clears throat> so let us start, right? So first we have to understand like, what is a SASE framework, right? So if someone is going to ask, what is a SASE? Because without understanding the SASE framework, this G scalar product or any cloud security product is like incomplete. So I'm not going to do that very deep dive about the SASE, but yes, I'll just try to make you understand what does it mean SASE, right? So when I discuss about the SASE, so the SASE is not a technology. First of all, you have to understand SASE is not a technology. SASE stands for Secure Access Service Edge, right? And it is a framework. It is a framework like it is just a concept. It's not a technology. It's not the product which is available. You can just purchase and deploy in your organization. No, it's just a concept similar to the OSI model and TCP IP model, right? So OSI was the blueprint. OSI was a concept. 
and by leveraging those osi concept the tcp ip was built and finally this tcp ip was using as a you know one of the protocol to just exchange the data between two computers right so similarly sasi is the framework that is developed by the gartner uh, that is a gartner magic is just you know everyone it's an open standard company uh, or like the organization who just do their market research they understand the market requirement and based on the market requirement including the technology including the enterprise network enterprise, including the isp network in, in, including their security including the cloud so they are evaluating every market and after that they come with some conclusion and they propose some kind of solution in the market so that if let's say, suppose you want to upgrade your network right the market demand is trending in somewhere else whatever the legacy is running that is not meeting those demand so that sassy framework is going to cater because the gartner has developed some kind of the you know concept and they are uh, offering those concept to different different vendors right means uh, or you can understand in this way vendors are adopting those concepts to just develop the products so the sassy is something a concept toward developed by the gartner magic and after developing those concepts the vendors like uh, acquire those concepts they understand those blueprint and they develop the product so the product was developed by the g scaler <clears throat> that g scaler product was like we can just think about g scaler we having a three major product like the gia we having the gpa we having the jdx they also offering this sd wan solution right they also talking about the gtna they also talking about the firewall as a service right uh, sorry for that let me correct it so they are talking as a uh, it should be fw so that is firewall as service and then they are talking about that uh, secure web gateway so these are the complete journey of sassy so i'm just tar targeting one product that is gs killer but i should remove this and if i'm just going to talk about the sassy sassy is going to include these all technology so if you want to develop a product who just work as a sassy framework or they just going to work as a sassy concept then you just have to include your secure web gateway you have to include as a firewall as a services you have to adopt the gtna model that is a zero trust network access i'll explain what does mean the zero trust network access and this is the very key things nowadays everyone is talking about the zero trust network access and then this gia and gpa just limited to the g scaler so it is not part this jdx is also limited to the like g scaler so sassy framework is going to include this secure web gateway firewall services gtna concept in the sd wan if you are going to include these all technology together then it is going to become a sassy right means your network is going to adopt nowadays current running market scenario technology where your business is going to meet the digital transformation requirement because the way of working has been completely changed right the hosting the data the hosting the application has been completely changed it's not like the native or legacy way to just hosting data in our data center no application are hosting anywhere right your application are not limited to one location some are the cloud based application right they are acting as a software services just you can think about office 365 dropbox right we having a many saas application available some application are just hosting in different different cloud providers like the public cloud and private cloud so they are just like leveraging their platform so they are ex including that platform as a services right or they are just in integrating with those application data center as a infrastructure services so that is also private with the public cloud so they we having the lot of way lot of cloud private public public cloud we have lot of public cloud like aws we have we have azure we have gcp so these clouds are also very popular and they are going to you know give the lot of flexibility to the you know companies enterprise to just host their application host their data and same time they are just you know going to help to minimize the cost as well so let's say suppose someone is trying to you know build their you know company their infrastructure so probably in earlier phase they have to invest a lot 
but nowadays the technology has been changing day by day so that's why the things are getting in different way to just hosting the application hosting the data and further how my users are going to interact with those data those like connections is going to build and how my security is going to be there that's why the sassy is going to come in a picture and it is going to help to new company or might be the old company who is trying to transform their data in the sassy framework so they are going to help to just build the connection from their on location or might be working from home location means user are working from the anywhere to just meet those security and network requirement and those security and network requirement are again for that we require the secure web gateway we require the firewall as a service right we require the <clears throat> gtna network right we require the you know uh, sd wan so sd wan without sd wan you cannot achieve this sassy framework and when you talk about the gtna firewall as a service and uh, secure web gateway this is purely security product and which is known as the cloud security right and this cloud security major popular vendor available in the market that is a g scaler we having the palo alto and we having the netspoc so these are the three leader vendors available along with that we having the versa as well right we having the fortigate as well right we having that um, uh, what we can say checkpoint also having but not much popular but yes they are also cisco is also having their product but they are not quite popular like with the g scaler so that's why g scaler is the market leader if you go and search the gartner report of the gartner report for this you know cloud security so you are going to find g scaler leader in the market let me show you probably we'll see it here so if i'm going to just search it let me go here cloud security you just go and search this and you will find that g scaler leading the market so open anything so it is probably 2020 let me latest one figure out that so this um, see here it is just showing for the uh, native spoke at the top but uh, g scaler is going to be top you can see here they are these are the leader in the market native spoke g scaler and the polo but uh, this is just you know updated in the february 2023 so if you just check the latest one which is going to come in the market sometime g scaler are having the very good customer base uh, across the globe so you are going to find g scaler is leader in the market but yes, native spoke is also having the very good customer base. They are also letting their solution are very, you know, uh, efficient, very robust solution. The cust customer are also adopting these solutions, right? So that's why SASE is going to adopt by the different different vendor and different different vendor are going to give the different different product solutions. So you can go with your any SASE solution. If you are going for the Palo Alto, you are going to get the solution as a Prisma access, right? Prisma access solution. It's having similar component what the G scaler have. G scaler, again, they're having a two component that is a major GIA and GPA. We are going to talk more about it and followed by the JDX, which is just a monitoring tool. And it is going to give the deep understanding about the your all packet level forwarding, which is going to happen from the one source to another destination application level hope by hope everything is going to be covered in this part right similarly native native spoke having the native spoke internet access native spoke they're having the private access we having the cisco that having the dns solutions they having dns security they have they having the gtna solution also they have so you just have to do exploration of the vendors and you will find that similar kind of solution right so we are going to talk about the g scaler right so if i go and talk about the g scaler solution so in G scaler how this G scaler is going to help to achieve the gtna which is zero trust network requirement so to achieve this gtna g scaler using two things one is the gia and one is a gpa so what is gia and what is gpa so gia stand for the g scaler internet access 
and GPA is G scalar private access. Okay, so first thing you just have to understand these two food form. Okay, these two products are going to be used to achieve this GTNA requirement. So what is GTNA? First thing you have to understand what is GTNA? What is zero trust network access? So let me explain first what is GTNA, then I'll explain what is GIA and what is GP. Okay, because the fundamentals should be very clear. What is GTNA? So I'll give a very simple example to make you understand on the GTNA. So let me go on my slide. Okay. And here is example. Let's say suppose you have legacy way of the accessing the application. Legacy way of accessing the application. Let's suppose this is your data center. Sorry for my bad writings. So this is your data center. You having a lot of applications, right? These are your apps are hosting here. And these are connected with the might be the this is a switch. These all are connected. And further, you having some short of the firewall. Just assume you having the firewall. And by using this firewall, you connecting to the internet. This is your internet circuit. Right. This is connected. And let's say suppose this application might be can be accessed from the work from home users might be accessed through any your branch location this is a branch location so might be this is connected with the internet or mpls and might be your user are just sitting behind of this switch these two possibility we have okay so if i am going to host this application this application must having some ip address so let's suppose 192.168.10.10 192.168.10.11. These are the app. 192.168.10.12. And this four server is 192.168.10.13. This is for my Citrix. This is for my SAP. This is, this is for my files here. This is for my, uh, just be think about the SFTP. Okay. So these are the like uh, four application I have right based on these four applications I have to access this from work from home so this work from home also need to connect with the internet might be your home internet they having the private IP address and this network also might be having the private IP address because they are the office so how this user is going to access this application so basically you have to use some short of the VPN solution because you are working from home so if you are using the Cisco, then you might be using Cisco Any Connect. I'm just giving the very basic example. This is Cisco Any Connect VPN. Might be using the Palo Alto, then you are using the Global Protect, right? If you are using the Forty Gate, might be using the Forty Client, right? Similarly, if you are using the G Scaler, then I'm just writing here. Still, we don't know what is GPA, so we are going to use the G Scaler Private Access. Right. So these are the four ways, just giving the example, we can access from the work from home. So what is going to happen in this user? So in this user machine, either you required this software, either you required this software, either required this software, either required this software. So if you're using the Cisco Any Connect, so similar to my computer, if you go here, you can see in my computer, I have this Cisco Any Connect. So this kind of VPN you just have to use, right? Also I have the G scaler, which is connected right now. I'll show later stage. So how this GPA AGIA is going to be used, right? Similar, you have to use the global product, you have to use the 40 client. Then this user is going to make the communication. This user is going to make the communication by help of this particular firewall, and it is going to make the tunnels. So this is going to build the tunnels from this user machine to this firewall. Similarly, because this is the internet, so we have to make the secure connection. So again, I have to make the another tunnels, probably from this router. If it's a Cisco router, I'll have to make the another tunnel. So this tunnel is also going to form. So in this tunnel, what is happening? This is the way of the legacy. I'm talking about the legacy way of accessing the application, right? Understand clearly, what is the legacy way to access the application, okay? Then I'll talk about the GTNA concept. So if my 
application are hosted in my data center in legacy way and i'm just going to access from the work from home then probably i have to build a tunnel and this tunnel are known as the client to site tunnel client to site vpn and this is known as the site to site vpn so till now everything is fine then what is the use case of the gtna right so the problem is whenever you make the any routing reachability and you just want to advertise this subnet because you having the larger number of the application which are going to host it in the gscaler so means a data center so you just have to advertise the entire subnet might be you just have to give the reachability of these subnets you are going to advertise from this firewall or you are just going to route access or vpn basis access uh, when you are just going to advertise this private network in the vpn segment then you have to expose your entire your public uh, private subnet in a state of the application let's suppose this user want to access just your citric application just he want to access citric application but because you are exposing your entire subnet we don't have any kind of the control here so user based on the user name based on the user machine uh, posture based on the user role we can just limit to access this citric application he cannot even log into this ip address he even cannot ping this ip address probably we just have not that kind of flexibility in the my legacy of the accessing application so basically what we are doing we are just exposing entire subnet whether this user not access the sap but still he can reach to sap ip address he can still reach to the file share ip address he can still reach to the sftp ip address so what does mean and similarly for this branch location users also they having a reachability you can ping to this ip address because we having the full network connectivity so this was the way of the accessing the application in the legacy way so just exposing your all subnets so there is a highly chance of the vulnerability there is attack there is a, you know some kind of the malicious activity is going to happen because somehow you not having the control based on the user role but whenever we going to talk about a gtna solution when i am going to talk about gtna solution the role is going to be changed because in gtna there is a concept zero trust network access so what does mean zero trust network access so zero trust network access means i am not going to trust anyone anymore simple concept i am not going to trust anyone anymore okay so if you having any application access requirement you have to prove your identity and based on your identity based on your role i'm going to allow access of those application which mapped by your organization you should access those apps so let's just suppose this is you know john wanted to access sap application so based on the john user id might be john when logging to the laptop he is going to prompt with the user id and that user id is going to create it by the your idp provider that is a identity provider so that identity provider is going to uh, match with your you know company whatever the sasi solution they have taken and when the data is going to travel from the sasi framework right might be think about there is a in between your communication there is some kind of the zero trust exchange right in gscr we call it zero trust jt so it is known as the zero trust exchange so let me show you something very interesting what is zero trust exchange so let me see where the slide is so you guys little bit understand what is zero trust exchange see so this is the zero trust exchange okay in this zero trust exchange what is going to be happen understand so in zero trust trust exchange means right user right application right device is going to access any application means as per your company policy if user is right your application which is going to access by user that is right from the right device even it is not possible you can access the application by using any device even i am in the network it's not like that even device posture is going to be using like monitor and then only you can access your any business applications by using the business policy 
over any network. This is a zero trust concept, right? So what does means? So more broadly, they are talking about zero trust is a framework for ensuring the organization can deliver connectivity to the protection of their assets. In that, no user, no application, no network should be trusted by default. Simple meaning of the zero trust means no user, no application, no network should be trusted by default. You have to prove your identity. If you fail to prove your identity, you cannot connect to the your application. This is a zero trust model, and this is known as GTNM, right? And that is known as a zero trust exchange. So this zero trust exchange is a part of this G scaler where user have to prove their identity without proofing their identity they cannot connect any application so in the same concept when this user is going to access first their identity is going to verify by the zero trust exchange and what is this zero trust exchange these are the your gia or might be the gpa data centers which is going to be used by the g scaler okay so let's come to the gia and gpa now uh, if you guys have any question, just type your query in the YouTube live chat. So I can see live chats. So I can try to answer those query as well. Okay. So don't be hesitate. So this zero trust exchange is going to come in a picture where it is going to give the access of the applications based on the role, based on the security policy, even not based on your subnet, not based on the IP. Okay. Right device, right user, right application is going to be access provided by that zero trust exchange. And then you can access the application. Okay, so now the first product we have that is a GIA. Okay, so first of all, let me show you how GIA is going to look like, how GIA is going to be look like, and how GPA is going to be look like when you have to do a little bit some kind of the you know um, live testing. Okay, so let me show you. So let me show you something GIA and GPA, then I'll move later just give me one minute okay so let me so here you can see that right so once you have that, you know, once you're talking about the product, so how basically GIA is going to look like? So you are going to get the dashboard like this, okay? You are going to get the dashboard like this for your company. And might be your company having this admin.gscloud.net or it is going to be gscaler.1, 2, and 3. So what is going to happen once you're going to purchase this as solution from the gscaler, it is going to assign one of the cloud tenant, GSQL cloud tenant, and that GSQL cloud tenant is going to be mapped with your company. And you are going to get the URL and username and password. Then you are going to log in. So this is GIA dashboard. Okay. So I am logging the GIA dashboard, and you can see they are talking about the cloud application. They are talking about the URL. They are talking about the what application I have used. Right. They are talking about uh, top segment of the users. Right. We having the app uh, like uh, analytics. We can do some kind of the uh, like uh, troubleshooting here, right? We can see the web insight. How the I'll show you later stage how it is going to be look like, and we can create a lot of policies. How the policy is going to be created? Malware protection policy. We have cloud and URL policy, file control, advanced threat prevention. We have sandbox, secure browsing, SL inspection, SaaS security API. How what is a cloud uh, access security broker? That is also one concept of the SASE framework. So that we just have to go through all these stuff. Then we have the firewall control. We having a DNS control. We have the FTP control, IPS control, right? Log uh, forwarding control we have. And in addition of that, we also having a GCC client connector portal, right? So this GCC client connector portal where you can create your forwarding profile. So many of you don't know what is a forwarding profile and what is the app profile. So I'll explain step by step each and everything, how it is going to be created even, right? And then probably we'll understand and how GCC client connector is going to be look like. So right now, if I show you, so let me, uh, you can see here, my GCC client connector is connected here. So I can do the packet capture. I can do a lot of information here. So I'll show you how this is going to be look like, but yes, 
my GCC client character is connected. I have some kind of the server and client IP address. I have the services on my authentication has been completed. So this is the one portal you have to daily work for your GIA work, right? So if you are going to become the cloud proxy engineer, so you just have to understand this GIA policy and how GIA is going to look like. So I'll explain later stage. Then similarly, we have the GPA, right? So this is GPA and GPA is just called private access. So I explain whenever you having a requirement, whenever you having the requirement to work from home, right? Then this GPA is going to be required without GPA. You cannot work from home. So GPA is just allowing communication. The user who is doing from anywhere work like they are road warrior. They are travelers, right? They are sitting in the remote location, not in office. This GPA is going to help you to make the like zero trust communication between your application and you via the public shared network or private shared network or private dedicated network, whatever network you're using. It is just going to use this way. All right. So this is GPA and GIA is something is the cloud proxy. So let me explain what is a cloud proxy and how this architecture is going to come in a picture. Okay. So let me show you. So this is a GPA private access. So you can just create different different kind of the applications <coughs> you can provision the connectors. So right now uh, we don't have any kind of the uh, connector provision here. You can see here. So we'll do from the scratch how the connector is going to be provisions, how the provisioning key is going to be created. So already provisioning key is created. Connector is going to be added and uh, probably I'll show you a step by step how the IDP is going to be. So in this case, we can use Okta and uh, I can use that, you know, Azure AD uh, LDAP server as well. So this is map with the Azure, right? But we can use the Okta as well. How the SAML attribute is going to be there? What is the step by step process to integrate this all attribute? What is the scheme integration we have? So even the scheme integration we have done. So that is also going to be, you know, uh, how the scheme logs are going to be. What is the scheme? What is the useful of this scheme and how we can define the policies? So access policy, how can be defined for the application? So how we can allow the application access and what is the role of this timeout policy? What is the concept of the timeout policy client forwarding policy? So we just have to understand this timeout policy also how it is going to play a very vital role. In addition of that, we also have to understand what is a client forwarding policy, right? And what is the machine tunnels? What is the machine provisioning key? When we having the IoT devices, how these are going to be, you know, connect with the G scaler? What type of tunnel they are going to build? Any notification, any live logs, troubleshooting, we have to do that. Then how it is going to be happen? How the like logs are going to be looks like? How we can do the troubleshooting in terms of the whatever the policy it has been. So let me customize for the last five days. So probably we'll see some logs here. So you can see eight logs we have and some of the application we have connected in the last last five day, right? And then these are a different different application. They are connected on prime connectors and we can do the different different kind of the, you know, uh, troubleshooting steps by connecting the IP address duration protocols. So these are the key things we have to do the very deep dive in terms of the GPA. So we have to understand the complete functionality of dashboard, which I start the complete series about this GPA. So you guys understand and similar for the GIA, we have to understand every section of the Gscaler dashboard. That is a web security, right? How the policy is going to be created, how the firewall is going to block the policy. Let me show you some live logs for you. So let's me, let me, I'm going to use something website, <clears throat> which is, uh, let me go on the Google and I'm just going to use times of India website. So you'll see that in the GI, how my logs are going to be look like. So I'm just using this times of India website. So this is my URL. So I want to see that what is happening with this website. So I'll just go here and I'll just go in my GIA portal and you just go in the analytics and you just go in the web insights. And after going in the web insights, we having a lot of option to just filter it out. I, I can just find my client IP address. So there is two IP address external, which is my public IP address. So if I go in my public IP address, let me show you what is what is my IP address. So I can show my private as well. So this is going to deduct my public IP address. So because I'm connected to the G scaler, so it is showing the G scaler IP address, but this is not correct. Okay, this is G scaler IP address. So I have my private IP address also. So if I show my private, it is a 
let me show what is the IP address. So it is showing the 192.168.0.100. So let me use this. So let me go in the private IP address. So let me use the, my client. This is the private IP address. This is external one is GS color is connected. So I'll match and it is option. You want to match IPv4. So I'll use IPv4 or I can match the correct IP address, anything. Any IP address, V6 or V4. Just one option I match. And then I apply that. So it is going to show me, you have to select the timings, which day you want to fast the logs. So let me show you. So it is showing the complete day logs, but if you having the luxury, you can find the log for the five minutes. You can find, find the log for the custom times. So it is going to show a lot of logs, but I just access the times of India website. I want to see what is happening for times of India websites. So I can add more filters. So you can see there is a lot of options we have, right? So I can add, add more filters here. And if I go here, add filters, I can go here and just, I will use here. Might be there is an option. So URL search, okay? So here just click on the URL search, select on the not domain URL. And here, because we are not going to use the exact match. If you do the exact match, you have to copy the exact URL, but I'm just going to do the troubleshooting is the best way. So contains, I'll just put the contents. I'll just put this times of India. So I access it. So it is going to show me the logs. So let me see, see what is the logs that is going to show me. So you can see this is this is the times. You can see the times. If you go a little bit right, you can see this is a road warriors. Road warriors means I'm working from home, right? You can see this is the URL. Times of India. I use this is the, which category URL category you can see. This is a news and media. So right now it's allowed. That's why I, I able to see that. You can see a lot of cloud application, none, any threat name, none. So we having a lot of which type of protocol they're using. So I'm using HTTPSC. So this is showing the protocol as well. So just I'm giving the overview. What is the cloud application? So you guys don't know even what is a cloud application class, how it can be deployed, how it is going to allow, how it is going to block. So what is the department? What is the URL category? You can see news and media certificate, right? Pass server wildcast. You having a lot of things here to just check it. Okay. So a lot of data information available here. And probably if you, if you just want to see more information, just go in three dots and many things are disabled here. So you just have to enable. So let's suppose you want to see some kind of the OS version, right? You can just click it some OS type external device name. If you want to see, you can just check that block policy. If anything is getting blocked, any URL is getting blocked by the policy. So you can just see the block policy name. You can just see the traffic forwarding. You can also see uh, what, how many data has been sent, how many data has been received. Uh, you can see the response code. You can see the server IP address, external IP address, which I was showing client IP address. You can see, I just put it this 192.168, 0, 0.0, so it is going to show now. So let me see what else. So by default, some information are disabled, but you can just enable from here in the log. So you can just select some suspicious content. So let me just do this one, okay? So if I go now right side, you can see this is my client IP address. And this is my external IP address, which is just my use by the ISP. And what I see here, this is my GSKiller IP address because I am connected with the GSKiller internet access. So it is showing my GSKiller IP address. So here you can see here, this is my actual external IP address, which is my ISP IP address. And this is the Times of India server IP address, see? So if you do the NS lookup of this particular domain, so let me show you NS lookup. <clears throat> So probably let me do on a different system. So we can find this, you know, IP is already. So let me show you by the snip. Uh, just give me one minute. So I just did the NS lookup and here we can hold on. So because these are the global DNS, you can see times of India. So they are different, different IP address. So they keep changing in dynamic because the server are hosted in a different, different location. So sometime the IP you are doing the NS lookup and the IP using by the GS they are going to change. That's why they are showing 23 series with IP address, but here probably it is a 142. You can see here 23, it is showing correctly. 23, 63, like 
you can see this is this 63 and 90. So you can see this IP is matching correctly. So this is a Times of India IP address. You can see these are Times of India 104. This might be the also so because they are the hosting AWS Azure server. So these IP are getting changed. So this is the way you can do some little bit troubleshooting. It's just overview. I'm just explaining so you guys can at least understand how this is going to be look like. Okay. Rest. The policy configuration, right? Let me see. See, 200 OK code. This is the HTTPS, uh, HTTP code response. That is the means connection is fine. There is no problem with the connections. And similarly, how many data you have sent, how many receipts. See, this much data you have sent. For forwarding profile uh, means uh, what the GCC client connector. So you are sending the traffic. There is a multiple way of the sending the traffic. So most common way of sending the traffic is the uh, GRE for the office user or IPsec or GCC client connector. So you are going to get, if you're sending the traffic with a GRE tunnel, there you will find the GRE, okay? If you're sending the traffic with the IPsec, you're going to find the traffic as a IPsec. If you're going to send the traffic to GCC, that GCC client connector is showing. And again, they are going to use the version 1.0 and version 2.0 and tunnel, there is another way, tunnel with local proxy, TWLP where tunnel version 1.0 with the local proxy is going to come in picture. So we'll understand what is this concept about tunnel with local proxy in later stage. But yes, this is a, these are the concept which is going to be used. And if there is any policy is going to block for your connection. So it is going to here. So right now we see this connection is allowed. You can see here this connection is allowed, but any URL is getting blocked. Then you are going to find this URL is getting blocked it here. So right now it is allowed. So there is no policy is going to be blocked here so you are going to find everything is allowed and that's why you having this client ip destination ip address and these are the like different different device name you can see the device os even my computer os is getting uh, inspected by the gp uh, gia so this is gia we having a lot of things policy can create we can create a different different group we are making any changes then we have to activate and also we having some kind of the troubleshooting tool as well so you will just want to analyze some kind of the proxy test you want to do that some kind of the risk url you want to analyze so this is julo julo is one of the feature by using this julo uh, command you can type any url so let me just type uh, this is one url so you can analyze about the risk with this how safe your web browsing is if any, if any destination you are going to use so it is going to give the real time results so this is julo right so uh, this julo is quite uh, popular in the gscaler so it is very helpful if you are going to allow any url so better you check the risk what is associated with this url if it is not right url it having a lot of risk so before you allowing take a consultation with your company it head or might be the, your you know it department this is like something is not good so any URL going to be analyzed it is going to give the result just a queued so after some time it is going to result about this url similarly we having uh, different different things here like the proxy test threat library so we'll discuss let how we can open a ticket with this particular uh, gia portal so i'll explain one by one everything but first we have to understand what is this gia right so let me explain a little bit how this GIA is going to be, you know, used in the SASE framework and where it is going to fit. So let's suppose this is you and you working from home. Okay. This is your office. This is the branch one and this branch having a lot of user again. These are the user connected with the switch, like these are the switch, right? And further switch is connected with the router. This is the one case. Another branch you might be having here, or a little bit one branch is enough to just explain my example. So we are understanding about the GIA concept, okay? Why is GIA is going to be coming a picture? G scalar internet access. So let's suppose you having a data center here. This is the one requirement and this data center again having the routers and behind this we having a switch here and this behind a lot of server are connected. This is the one use case. Another here as the internet. Okay. Internet means internet application. So internet app here you just wanted to access the Google. You wanted to access Facebook. 
you wanted to access <coughs> Instagram. Okay, these are the application you want to access. So in between your branch, your data center, your application, what is going to be happen? There is going to happen one of the internet cloud, right? So this is your internet cloud. If you are if you are in India, so might be this is the Airtel. Okay. If you if you are in somewhere in the US, so might be you're going to find AT&T, right? These are the little uh, quite popular ISP. Okay, let me put it this way. These are the ISP. So these users might you are working from home, so you might be connected with the ISP Airtel. So you have taken the broadband and you're going to connect. Your router is going to connect with the ISP router, right? This is router. So your branch is going to be connect again with this ISP router and these internet cloud are going to be connect to each other. So this is how it is going to be look like means what is happening means via this internet cloud, you are connected with your data center might be using the side to side VPN or might be you connected from work from home user to accessing this data center via client to side VPN. Right, this only two way we have. So where GIA come in a picture? So simple work from home user will go in the internet and might be I have the internet breakout from this data center to this application. So my user first land to my firewall, which is data center, and then we'll get to the internet breakout to go to the destination. This is the one way or might be this user can directly access to the internet. If there is a split tunneling concept is going to be allowed. This is another way we have. So what is the huge case of the GIA and where it is going to fit? We'll discuss the component very later stage, how the component is going to happen. What is the GIA functionality is going to happen? But first you have to understand where GIA is coming in a picture, where G scalar internet access is going to come in a picture. So I have the use case. There's two things I need. One, my work from home user should access my DC application. This is the one thing and means work from home or I can say branch one user. Second use case I have work from home user and BR one user access to internet. Just understand. So these are two use case I have, right? So first I want my work from home user and the branch should access my data center applications. And second, I want work from user and the internet should go to the many like the any internet based application simply branch will go to the ISP and ISP from there you can just have the internet access. So in the in the both case whatever control you have here in the router or whatever control you have in the firewall there is two way this both case data center application must be going to access this data center application must be going to access. Sorry for this line. Let me delete this one. Let me use your okay. So this is going to access via this way data center. This is going to access via this way to data center. There is a catch. I have my local breakout to access this internet or might have the central breakout I means central breakout means the user traffic must reach to the central location. Then I can access the internet. Only these two huge cases I have. So most of the company will find they are allowing the central breakout means from the data center, they allow the connection to the any applications from the data center point. They allowing the first to reach the data center, then you can access the application. So you're going to find your application are accessible from the data center. So in data center, if application is going to reach, then your firewall is going to apply the all policy, whether it should be allowed or not allowed to access the Google, Facebook or the Instagram. And based on that, they're going to allow the access, but all connection is going to be land on the firewall and these firewall are you know very costly and they are also going to create a lot of scalability issue because let's suppose you having the thousands of the user working from home many thousands of user working from home see it is very difficult to maintain that much client to site vpn here in the firewall and the load is going to be too high you will have to put a lot of money in the licensing part so if, to avoid this configuration complexity to avoid a lot of cost a lot of not have the flexibility in terms of the security just introduce the GIA. So what is going to happen in this case once you take this GIA solution. So GIA is going to come in between your data center 
and your internet so this is going to remain same this internet cloud is going to remain same but one more layer is going to be there one more layer is going to be added there so just think about this is the one of the barrier is going to be come in here this is known as a zero trust exchange zero trust exchange this is going to come in a picture so this zero trust exchange is again going to connect with your isp internet and this is again going to connect there is another internet isp which is going to make the connectivity to these two location this is again isp okay internet isp so what is going to happen now when your traffic is going to initiate to access the data center application first if you are using that gps solution if you are using the gps solution zero trust private zero uh, uh, in z square private access then your private application are going to access directly Toward the data center via the zero trust exchange means still your work from home office is going to come from the user machine to zero trust exchange and then that zero trust exchange is going to allow based on their policies based on the role based on the department based on the company profiles your laptop details which is going to monitor and then it is going to be allowed to the data center application if you're using a gp application because G square private access is going to allow to access the private application if you're working from home okay so what is going to happen here this for the private application this user are going to create one of the tunnel so let me just use some different color so this is going to create one of the tunnel sorry they are going to create one of the tunnel from this location to this location okay this is your tls based secure tunnel and this is something one of the device call as a gps service edge gps service edge sc and then from this gps service edge to one of the tunnel is going to terminate one of the connector is going to be created on your data center and that connector further so this is one of the g connector and that connector is further going to be make the reachability to your local application and here inside of this tls connection right inside of this tls connection there is one of the m tunnel is going to be created that is a micro tunnel is going to be created and this micro tunnel is going to actual do the communication from user machine to the, your gps service edge and from gps service edge to g connector and then it is going to happen to the actual and when it is going to all communication happen from user client machine to gps service edge, that is going to happen via the synthetic ip address means unreal ip address so i'll explain how this architecture is going to happen. but but you just have to understand the tunnel is going to create it through a private application to access these kind of the stuffs but when you want to access the any internet based application this gpa is not useful for you then the same pc having the gcc client connector install gcc client connector in this gcc client connector two services running one is a gpa one is a gia so this GIA is going to again come in a picture and is this GIA is going to build another tunnel from the same machine toward this. Here another device is going to be added. That is a GIA service edge, SE service edge. Okay. So this is going to create another tunnel, right? This tunnel is going to be created and this tunnel is further going to check whatever request you are going to do to access this internet based application because it is going to connect to the application actual internet so your user request is going to come from this machine after receiving this machine this tunnel could be three types one is the http connect right one is the your uh, tls uh, means uh, 1.0 or 2.0 or dtls 1.0 or 2.0 this is two type of tunnel we have so tunnel version 1.0 so we'll discuss what does means tunnel version 1.0 and 2.0 so my traffic is going to come from this user machine this user machine make a tunnel by the http connect method lightweight connect method if i'm going to use tls 1.0 2.0 is going to be different way where the tls dtls um, like the tls uh, or dtls is going to build right 
so based on that we are going to create that tunnel and that tunnel is going to further allow once the traffic is going to reach here there is a one of the central authority here concept is going to come in a picture which i explain later stage what is that so based on your company policy where you are going to configure this policy so the policy is going to configure on your gia admin portal so this is your gia admin portal so whatever policy you are going to configure here based on your policy the communication is going to allow so if any url is blocked for the any user so that is not going to be access that is not going to be allowed so that is going to block by the gia so in that case new f new f of working any traffic is going to come for the private application that is going to land to the gpf services and any traffic is going to access the public services that is going to land on the gia services so first thing you have to understand gia is something for the any public destination you want to access gpa anything you want to access the private destination and both case the traffic is going to land on the zero trust exchange zero trust exchange is going to allow and then after your communication is going to happen with the actual applications so how this is going to happen with the branch location so the branch location little bit way of working has been changed so i explain the use case from the work from home how this is going to access the data center application how it is going to be your uh, internet application but when we talk about the branch location so first of all in the branch location you are in the trusted network so you not require the gpa solution you not required gpa solution so if you are in the office you don't need any gpa solution you can access the application from directly from your trusted network because you are already part of the trusted network so you having the private application reachability with a trusted network so no gpa required from the branch office user this is the recommended way but still if you want to use then you can use there is no problem the logic is again going to same if even you are in the branch and you want to make the communication data center with the gpa so your machine is going to form a tunnel again a tunnel is going to form between your machine because your application must be there to the gpa services and from gpa services is going to build a tunnel with the gc connector and then after your application is going to be accessible and how the tagging is going to happen how the packet is going to exchange from this to that that i'll explain later stage but it is not recommended but when i am in the branch location and i want to access this internet based application then i have to use this gia service edge this is going to come in a picture gia service edge right so what is going to happen i have two solution because in branch this is not recommended to use the gcc client connector means this is not recommended so what is the way of forwarding the traffic to the g scaler so i have two way either i can use the gre tunnel or i can use the ipsec tunnel this is a two way i can use so if i am going to use the gre tunnel so my router is going to create one of the tunnel to the zen or my firewall is going to give the one of the tunnel to the zen and this is known as the most common or most recommended gre so what is going to happen my any user traffic is coming from the lan they are going to encapsulate it in the gre tunnel and after encapsulating in the gre tunnel they are going to land in the gia service edge and once it is going to land in gia service edge gia service edge is going to consult with the central authority that is the brain of the gia which is a zero trust brain and based on the whatever the policy you are going to configure for this branch user based on those policy like what url you are allowing what url you are blocking based on those all things what malware protection we have what kind of the sandbox advanced threat protection you have based on that all policy file control policy your traffic is going to be either allow or either block so let's suppose i created policy this user one should not access the facebook should block so once the traffic is going to land it here it is going to be blocked at this location all right if it is allowed then it is going to access the facebook so this is the gre similarly if i want to create the ipsec that is also possible but if you are going to use the ipsec it is going to give the low bandwidth so that way gre is recommended so this is the way how you can connect from the office and to your data center applications or might be internet based application or cloud based application so any cloud based application any data center based application or any internet based application so you just have to take a note 
if i want to connect my data center application i have to use my gpa because my road warrior users if working from home <coughs> then my tunnel should be created from the user machine if i am the office gpa is not recommended but still i want to use the cloud based application right cloud app if i want to use the internet based application then i use the gia it is recommended so this two term is going to come in a picture so what is the third term and what is the most important jdx right so we understand about the gi gpa and gia and we understand the use cases where we can be used any question guys please put it in the chat i'll try to take it but what is a jdx because our discussion today about we try to understand gia so we understand the gia is the like the one of the uh, key features like discover the capabilities to just secure your internet connection cloud based connection when going via the internet then gia is come in a picture gpa is something when you want to access the private application from anywhere that gpa is going to come in a picture it's like the simple vpn solution but what is a jdx digital experience g scalar digital experience so this is something it is very powerful tool to just troubleshoot hope by hope any application related problem any connectivity related problem let's suppose you are here let me just explain let's suppose your machine is here you connected with your local isp that is a broadband circuit right this broadband further connected with the multiple isp like isp isp1 then it is connected with the isp2 and then it is connected with the zero trust exchange that is g scalar right this is g scalar cloud and then it having another isp and then it having the azure dc where actual your app is hosted this is a switch just your app is hosted this is your app actual app so how many hopes you have so you can just count it let me uh, use this this one okay so one hope two hope three hope four hope five hope six hope and seven hope where your actual application is hosted so that many hopes are there so let's just suppose this user start complaining hey i am facing the slowness right if i am start facing the slowness then how you are going to troubleshoot <laughs> you are going to check probably you are just going to verify the your local isp link the first thing you are going to check ping is fine no there is no drop there is no something issue so probably you will going to ask your server side you are going to do the end to end testings <clears throat> but you not sure where is the issue right because while doing the end to end testing might be you, you are start getting the 5% packet loss right but you don't know which node is actual culprit even the trace is not going to give some exact results so this jdx tool is going to analyze hope by hope even the machine devices every information it is going to analyze by hope by hope and it is going to give which device having the high latency means which device having the high utilization right even that is going to be which device having the high memory right utilization which node having the high latency which node having the packet loss which node having the high like bandwidth utilization so lot of information is going to give in the graphical format so someday i'll show the G, G, uh, jdx output as well but let me use something here let me jdx uh, let me show you something so you guys can understand oh sorry so it is going to see this kind of the output let me show you so even it is going to show you which device is coming in a picture right which type of device it is like so it is going to give how many milliseconds you having the uh, quality while doing the microsoft team right let me show you what is the like uh, experience uh, uh, not this one let me yeah this this diagram you can see see here this is what i was trying to see so even your this is a private ip address right it is showing how many milliseconds you have the you know uh, from your 
broadband router then you having another network might be the g scalar then between g scalar to broadband how many latency you have from g scalar to another gps services gis services and then your application is with gps services sometime we have this requirement when we are using the sipa policy so this gis services send traffic with gpa so is there might be latency between these sometime happen in data center itself there is a device not doing well so it is going to give that latency as well then it is connected to third party vodafone grace network then how many latency i have from this vodafone network then i am connected to one of the app connector which is like inside of the company data center then how many latency i have and then what is the latency for the actual application so we have end to end visibility and this visibility is supported by the jdx so jdx now supported the gsclear private access so even we are using the private access or gia both it's going to support and it is going to measure end to end internal application end to end cloud path means from your device to your application it is going to very good result to just see what is happening in my network what kind of quality i am getting while accessing the microsoft team in zoom calls any other cl cloud based application saas application that is going to be give this kind of the output see so this is a very powerful it is going to see the you know quality score as well how it is going to look like it is going to show you like how many application are active what is their quality score it is also going to give some kind of the like uh, network interface like dns how where where it is connected so this is graph is also going to be available in jdx so i'll show you how this all is going to be happen in the jdx right so i hope we are clear till here right then we understand about the sasi we understand about the jdx we understand about gpa we understand about gia now we just have to understand few more thing in this particular solution so one is the sasi we understand what is secure web gateway so gia solution is a secure web gateway secure web gateway means you are going to access any applications right so you must have to process means you, your application must have to process with the cloud proxy and that is in case in of g scaler that is a gia so this gia is just inspecting all the web application right all the cloud based application right so this is acting as a secure web gateway secure web gateway is something where traffic is going to be travel and based on traffic inspection is going to be happen and gtna we understand what is gtna zero trust network eh? then firewall is service why firewall is services because when you are accessing the cloud based application you are accessing any interface application there is just firewall is going to be required to control some traffic based on the port based on the protocols which need to be allow ssh need to be allow ntp need to be allow or disallow so if you are talking about the web traffic which is going to inspect it based on the these two pro, these two ports the port 80 which is the http and port 4443 port that is the https so these port are only part of the web traffic but also we having some kind of the custom requirement we have to access the dns right that is going to work on port 53 sometime we have to do the sftp right that is going to work on port 22 or might be the ssh is going to work telnet is going to be required some kind of required ftp so these are the non standard port so earlier this cloud proxy was not supporting these kind of solutions so that's why they have integrated that firewall as a service so firewall as services is something you don't require even the firewall at your location means if you are building your network and you just want to access any application no firewall is going to require just make the plain network right you just deploy the routers and just connect your all the lan switches so how it is going to happen let me just draw here so you just have your branch location and in this branch location just required one or two routers and these one or two router is going to connect the switch and behind this switch your user is going to be set so because this is a switch and this is a user so because we having a zero trust exchange <coughs> by gscaler so you just have to build the tunnels these are in between we have the internet you just have to build a tunnel with this jt from this router to this router simply this is the your public service edge means gia public service edge this is gia and this is gia you just simply have to send your all traffic to gia and this gia will do the your wave inspection 
this GIA will do your firewall feature. So when we are using the firewall here in the GIA, that is known as the firewall as a service, right? So this is known as a FWA, firewall as a service. So this firewall as a service is simple as like the Palo Alto firewall, like you're working as a checkpoint firewall, you're working for the FortiGate firewall, but in GIA, you're going to get, it is going to be integrated in the GIA dashboard. So you can do the firewall level control. You, can, you want to get the firewall policy, you can create here. You want to create the, some NAT policy, it is going to get it here. So both options is available in this particular firewall control as well, right? So this is the firewall as a service. Now, SD-WAN. Why SD-WAN is so much popular and why it is going to be required? Without SD-WAN, trust me, your network, your communication, is not going to possible to achieve zero trust exchange because every traffic you have to send that must be processed via the van means any location let's suppose i am in the office right this is my branch so first step to send the traffic to the any zero trust exchange or might be any cloud application you require some van and this van should be intelligent not the normal van normal van we are running the static route we are running the BGP, we are running the MPLS. That was not much capable. They are not very robust. So something we required, which is very robust, very popular, that is SD-WAN. So without this SD-WAN, you are incomplete to achieve the zero trust network access. And that's why this SD-WAN come in a picture. And this SD-WAN having a lot of vendor, Cisco is quite popular. We having the Palo Alto as well as SD-WAN. We having the uh, Velo SD WAN, right? We having the Versa SD WAN. We having the FortiGate SD WAN. We having the Silver Peak SD WAN. So we having the Aruba SD WAN. The Aruba and Silver Peak is the both same. So a lot of vendors are available in the SD WAN solution. Either of them, you just have to deploy so they can steer the traffic based on your network requirement. They can do the like the any security implementation when traffic is traveling through your network. So that's why this SD WAN also going to play a very vital key role here so i hope you guys understand these key things about the gscaler later stage i'll explain how this is step by step zero trust architecture is going to come in a picture what is my statistics data plane what is my central authority what how the log streaming is going to be happen how the saml is going to be integrated how this saml IDB provider is going to play a very vital role to achieve this zero trust model how your central authority is going to host, what are the G scalar enforcement node, because I was keep discussing the public service age or gen. So gen is something G scalar enforcement node. Sometimes we call it the PSC. That is one of the public service age as well, right? So the meaning is going to be same. So this PSC and um, going to be multiple location. Let me show you something. So let's say suppose if you go in the config.gscalar.com, so I told you, right? So right now I'm logging with the Gscaler. You can see this is my GIA tenant. So I am logging with the jscloud.net, right? So my organization, right? The access I have, that organization has been mapped in the GS Cloud, okay? But let's say suppose I want to use this Gscaler and I want to see my clouds. So your cloud like look like this way. So GIA having a different, different cloud, gscaler.net, gscaler onenet 2.net, 3.net, GS Cloud, which I logged in right now, gscaler beta.net for the sub lab practice. Most of the people are using this for the you know lab pur purpose. Government and uh, gscaler 10.net. So these are the cloud providers we have, right? <clears throat> Similarly, GP also having the cloud providers that is gscaler private access.com, government.com, government us, uh, GPA government us.com, JDX also having these providers, different tenants. So any of the tenants you are going to get from your GIA once you purchase them subscriptions, uh, subscriptions and once you get those subscriptions, you are going to see, let's suppose I am logging by the gscloud.net. So how many data center are available across the globe for this particular cloud? So more than 160 data center available. So or those data centers are mapped in the different, different cloud uh, tenants. So you can see here, let's suppose I am in the EMEA. So Abu Dhabi having the data center, Amsterdam having the data center, Brussels having, so you can just figure out your locations where you are, America for this one. So let's suppose I'll check for the Epic. Epic, let's suppose you can see Auckland, we have Beijing, we have Canberra, we have Chennai. So this is the India base. So you can see this is Chennai. So you can see the 
IP address. So if I go and check IP, uh, let me, what is my IP address? <clears throat> so it is going to deduct this particular, this 165.225. So if I see here, let me uh, 225.125. So let me search it here. 165.225.225.125. So let me see. Probably should be in daily, but it is not able to fill it out. See here, it is showing. So this is going to come in the daily range, but somehow this IP is not showing. Uh, probably it is going to see slash 23. So it is going to fall in this range because slash 23. So 125 is going to fall in this range only. So this is how you can check like where you are connected, right? And uh, let me <coughs> check this one. So it is going to see here. So you connected on this particular, see Delhi. You see, this is the Del Delhi you connected here and this is your IP address, your private IP address. And this is my the uh, proxy where I am connected. So this is the Delhi and this is the IP address. You can see virtual IP address. And this is going to be uh, this, uh, what is it, 44. The same range, 42 and 44 they are using. So it is going to fall in this. So this is how you can check. So your clouds, you just have to use your cloud provider. You just have to check the locations by using where you are connected. It is going to show your uh, GPA, G, GIA, GN, service age as well. So I'll discuss in the troubleshooting part how we are going to check this all. But yes, this is going to be very helpful. But this GN, uh, sorry, GIA clouds are available for the GIA for all data center information. But GPA, you don't find anything here. GPA, you don't having the uh, location uh, details available in this config.gscaler portal. Because this is something confidential with the gscaler. So if you want to know where my connection is terminating for the which services from the private services, so you can't find this information. You have to connect with the Gscaler, right? So I hope you guys understand and able to uh, get some knowledge about this uh, GI and GPA and later stage will understand about this control plane, data plane, strategic plane, how the web security flow is going to happen. What is a single scan, uh, multi, multi action traffic how it is going to happen how the forwarding method we have gre vpns proxy chaining we understand the pack file gscaler app that is the uh, client connector right what is explicit forwarding what is the implicit forwarding how the provisioning is going to happen how the authentication is going to happen so these all do the deep dive and high ability so that is going to happen later stage not today because uh, we are just have deep understanding about the product only how the SASE come in a picture, how this JDX come in a picture, how the GPA come in a picture, how GIA come in a picture, how Gscaler come in a picture after SASE and firewall as service and the SD manager. So still any question if you have guys put it in the chat, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube, so I can take last uh, two, three minutes, I'll wait. If any question someone have, then I can take, else we can close this meeting. <clears throat> I'm just waiting. If anyone have any questions, Right, guys. So I believe we are good till here, right? So thank you so much for your time and presence. We'll connect in different session where we'll go to our, where we'll do the deep dive. And uh, yes, please, Devendra, ask your question. Please ask your question. Please go ahead. I'm waiting. Please put in chat. I'll see your question. Okay, is there 
uh, is this any requirement for the sd1 yes so see uh, to understand the gia gpa because there is two uh, engineer is going to be two type of engineers that's a really good question right he is asking uh, basically to know this g scaler or something in the cloud security do we require the uh, sd1 so see there is two career path in two type of one is a security engineer right and one is a network engineer right so this is a network engineer and if you want to achieve the gtna so these both engineers are going to require right so security engineer have to learn the g scaler where they have to learn about the gia gpa both but if you are the network engineer then you just have to learn about the sd wan right so you have to check your domain if you are purely focusing in the network engineer then you might be come with the ccna routing switching ccnp routing switching right cci routing switching and then sd wan is very important for you if you are in the security background then you might be know the palo alto firewall right you might be know the checkpoint firewall you might be know the forty gate firewall and then you also know the g scaler right so security engineer should know g scaler component firewall component network engineer knows sd wan and other routing switching component but if you are want to become the sasi engineer right and you want to become the like the very good uh, you want to serve very good role in their organization you want to know everything about the in and out of the traffic then you should learn about the security and plus you just have to learn about the networking as well so if you having the both background then you just have to grab this sd wan knowledge and grab this g scaler knowledge as well so it is my recommendation you become the multi skill person not the limited skill person because this is a trend of the market right devendra so you can start with the g scaler you can start with sd wan but i would suggest not go in a hurry not go in the you know one go thousand of course i am going to do that i just want to become expert within the six month and 10 month or might be the two year no it's not technology is not like that okay you have to work step by step step by step means i would suggest go one by one course digest one technology let's you start with sd wan first you become champion of the sd wan okay you know each and everything sd wan then you move your career with the any firewall right you know firewall then you very comfortable with firewall then i would suggest go with the g scaler if you don't want to learn this firewall or your company is using g scaler you can directly go but it required basic security fundamental right you should familiar with the basic security fundamental that's why the firewall is very important because this g scaler was driven the concept from the firewall and it is leveraging the same concept from the firewall so if you are coming with a firewall background g scaler is going to be very easy for you okay so you can start from anywhere but start one by one even you are going to do the ccna you just complete ccna in 6 month and become champion of the ccna 3 to 6 month take for ccna then you go for the ccnp not go for the hurry not go for the any kind of the you know um, like lucrative offers right it's not recommended so you just complete ccna take the 3 to 6 month and complete become champion then go for the sd wan again take 3 to 6 month trust me guys technology is something have to digest it's not easy it is not easy someone can you know pour in your mind not possible you just have to give the time you have to patience you have to do lot of practice then only you can understand the you know things okay any other question guys i hope uh, thank you devendra for asking the question right so i believe we are good let me see if anyone having anything to ask all right so thank you so much everyone have a great evening to all okay so music when the next session is scheduled so next session is going to be scheduled very soon okay where we are going to do the deep dive about this uh, module that module is going to happen about the elements of the gs scalar cloud we'll try to discuss about the uh, means not try we will definitely do a discussion about the multi scan uh, 
single uh, single scan with a multi action concept traffic warding method will try to do some kind of live testing of the g scaler so that is going to happen uh, very soon okay probably will start from next week okay so if you guys having any query you can reach out